Now our American cousins seem to think that we Canadians always have snow on the ground all year round, that we're Eskimos, and that we live in igloos. Well, today's recipe will do absolutely nothing to make them believe differently. So let's get to it. So these are the ingredients that you'll need to make the Iglo meatloaf. That will be 2 pounds of ground beef, 10 to 12 regular sized potatoes, 2 onions, 2 eggs, 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of pepper, 1 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 cup of milk, and finally 4 tablespoons of butter. All right, so here's the ground beef that we'll be using. And to that, we're gonna be adding one teaspoon of salt. Okay, next will be one teaspoon of uh, pepper. Now you can spice this any way you want with the amount of spices you want, it's up to you. Okay, we're gonna also add to this one teaspoon of garlic powder now I'm using here garlic and roasted uh, peppers so um, but if you just want to go basic you can use garlic powder we're also going to be adding now two eggs okay and to that we'll also be adding two uh, onions I'm using one red and one yellow you can use whichever ones you want just gonna dump that right in there make sure we get our little, little last bit of it and you also want to make sure that you finely chop the onions. So, next is to get your hands dirty and start mixing that up well. <laughs> okay, so once you're done mixing, you're going to want to grab yourself a dish to put the glue uh, in, the meatloaf, I should say. So, grab yourself a whole bunch of uh, beef there, ground beef, and uh, place it in the dish. Now, what you're going to want to go for here is the shape of a half dome. Now, I know some people have been known to do this in a bowl. They'll put the ground beef in the bowl and then tip the bowl over into the pan or what have you, and it'll fall out. Fortunately, from what I've seen, it uh, doesn't always work that way, and it takes them longer to take it out than to make it. So, once your uh, half dome is completed, you're going to want to work on your entrance to the igloo, and that's what we're doing next. So, grab yourself another... Uh, bunch of meat and start making your entrance and you're going to want to make sure that's sealed well to the uh half globe there so that it all cooks evenly okay so once that's done uh just take it put it in a 350 uh degree uh oven for one hour and now it's time to take care of the potatoes so you as i said you'll need 10 to 12 potatoes here chopped in quarters and uh, what you're going to want to do is bring that to a boil for about 30 minutes. And once it's done boiling, well, you're just going to want to take that bad boy and uh, strain it. So we'll strain the potatoes. Get rid of as much water as possible. And there's always going to be a little leftover. But not to worry. Okay, so once they're strained... Place them back into your pot or into a mixing bowl, whichever works best for you. Now that, next, you're going to grab your masher and just mash away at them until you mash every, little bit, every last little bit of potato. Add some salt to that. Another teaspoon of salt, that is. Uh, and next, we'll be adding four tablespoons of butter. Now I've cut them up into cubes, make it easier. Okay, and once you're done uh, adding the butter, um, you're going to want to mix it. So grab yourself a hand mixer and just start blending away until all the butter is incorporated into the potatoes. Once that's done, you're going to want to grab yourself one cup of milk and add half of it in first. And start mixing. Get that milk all mixed in. And then add the rest, or as much as needed, or as little as needed. 
depending on how you like your potatoes. Whether you like them creamy or fluffy. All right, and just whip away until desired consistency. Next, you're gonna grab your meatloaf and take it out of the oven. You're gonna lay it to rest on the rack for about 10 minutes. Okay, and then after 10 minutes, you're gonna wanna place that back into the pan, grab yourself some potatoes, start applying it to the, uh, the meatloaf generously everywhere throughout the whole igloo meatloaf. Just keep adding. And just put it on everywhere, make sure it's fairly smooth. Now, uh, what you're gonna wanna do after you place it on is just smooth out any rough parts, as you see like I'm doing now. It doesn't have to be perfect, do, do it the way you, you think it looks good. All right, so once you smooth it out, why don't you grab yourself a nice big skewer, and you're just gonna start making lines uh, throughout the igloo like you would in a regular picture of an igloo. So yeah, just start making your lines. Make sure to dig the skewer right down to the meat. Either way, it's gonna cook through, so no worries. Um, so yeah, just make yourself some lines. In other words, you're making bricks throughout the igloo, as you see here. Um, so yeah, next part is to add a little bit of melted butter and just brush it over the entire igloo. Okay, so next thing is put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes and this is what you'll get. The igloo meatloaf. So it's time to slice ourselves a piece and have a taste. So let's get to it. All right, so our uh, meatloaf igloo is complete and it's time to taste it. And here's our piece that we cut up. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this. First time I'm making this, so can't wait. Now I didn't add too many spices during my operation, so uh, I got it too long ago. So hopefully this will be good. Let's find out. Nice little piece here. I showed you before, here it is. And here's what it is. Ooh, I can see steam. All right, so let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. I thought it would be a little drier. You know, due to cooking it for an hour. Um, the first time, and then cooking it a second time. But uh, no, I guess it was thick enough. It retains its juices and uh, the potatoes acts like an insulator after we put them on. So it's perfect. And the potatoes didn't harden. So that's good. I like soft potatoes. Let's taste another piece. Really can't ask for any better than that. I'm very impressed. It's great for the kids. You want the kids to eat their food? It's the way you're showing them how to have fun with their food. And hey, who knows? Maybe they'll pick up cooking. But you know what? Let's uh, let's have Cruz have judgment on this meatloaf and see what he says. Ooh, gimme, 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 yo, that's so good. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this recipe once again. Um, and don't forget, all my recipes are mostly made with um, lactose-free uh, dairy products such as cheese, milk, um, and uh, cream cheese, and what have you, anything else that I can get my hands on that is lactose-free. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I hope you try it out for yourself. And don't forget, improve upon it. Do it the way you want to do it. You want to add a little more spice, add a little more. You want to add a little less, add a little less. But do it the way you want to do it. Because in the end, you're the one who has to eat, eat it. So enjoy what you eat. So until the next video, this is Freaky P saying, Good day.